After the events of Battle of Gods, Goku and Vegeta were training on Beerus' world to try and learn more about their god power. And, as we know, near the end, they would soon learn to master Super Saiyan Blue and learn how to transform into this power. During this time as they were training, Beerus was not very happy. They were getting too cocky. They were getting too confident, way too comfortable. As he did think about having a truly worthy opponent to fight him, but having all that raw power? Beerus remembers back to when he clashed with Son Goku. Even the power that Son Goku had as a god could destroy the entire universe. And Lord Beerus knows that his job is to maintain balance within the universe. Having beings as powerful is not good. This would all of what events would then take place but right before Frieza would then show up before. So this is right when they just started training. And Whis would then show them how his staff works. The staff works very similar as the Room of Spirit in Time, but inside of the staff is different, as they need to learn how to control the key that is leaking out of their body so they can learn to master God Key as they did in the original. So Son Goku and Vegeta would begin their training learning to master their God Key inside Oisa's staff. During this time, Beerus would be sitting there growing more and more irritated. The more that he thought about it, the more it made sense to the Lord of Destroyer. Beerus would then tell Whis to come here, and Whis would then walk up with a curious look as he can tell that Beerus has something very stressed on his mind. Beerus would then tell Whis about what he thinks about the mortals, and the fact that they're too comfortable. But he doesn't just want to outright kill them, he could Hakai them, but he doesn't really feel like doing that. He doesn't want to make it a hassle or have to deal with it either. He has an idea, and maybe to prevent any more damage to the universe is why don't just leave them in the staff, just lock them away and let them rot and die in there. That's just easier. Whis was very perplexed that Beerus would even offer this idea, as he would say, my lord, but this is very out of character, why? What have they done? Beerus would then explain his reasoning, and that it doesn't matter anyway. They're too comfortable and they could be a threat to the universe. And he says, I'll find somebody else to fight later on when I sleep. So Beerus would then get some much needed sleep, as he would tell Whis to do what he's told. Whis would, of course, bow and say, yes, my lord, if that's what you wish. Inside of the staff, Son Goku and Vegeta would have never noticed anything different, but a few days would pass and no food from Whis. They would start to be starving, as they needed food, but they were wondering what has happened. As the staff has disappeared, and now they're stuck, Goku would then panic and try and say, well, what do we do? Vegeta would then tell him to calm down, stop being an idiot. Vegeta has a very, very faint feeling that Lord Beerus has betrayed them. He can just feel it in his bones. Goku doesn't think, well, why? We've done nothing to him. And Vegeta states that it doesn't matter. He might have seen us as a threat, maybe, for how powerful we were. Or something. It makes no sense as to why the staff would disappear. But now as a few more days pass, Goku and Vegeta was on the verge of death, as they're starving to death. Goku would be floating in the room of spirit and time, looking at the seamless clouds, wishing that they were like cotton candy and he could eat it. Vegeta was meditating, trying to think of a way to get out, but it wouldn't work. They were starting to get skinny and hopeless. Whis would be sitting by himself, drinking tea, as he felt horrible. This is just not right. It's just not right to do this to these mortals who have done nothing wrong, and they technically gave Lord Beerus what he wanted, a true fight. Just because of this, Whis decides to be very out of character and go against Lord Beerus' own wishes. As Lord Beerus was fast asleep at this point, he will be asleep for another few years. Whis would then make the staff reappear, as Whis would then go inside of the room as well and talk to Goku and Vegeta and explain everything. He would tell them that he cannot outright disobey Beerus, but he will not let them die. Maybe take advantage of this and train harder than ever. As then, once when they are free, Lord Beerus would have forgotten about it. Whis promises them, as an angel, that he will make sure that they have plenty of food given to them so they can survive, and if it does take too long, as the time passes by differently, a day inside, outside as a year on the inside, he can always change their age, easily. As if Whis can make people give birth, and not to mention bring back the dead, I think he would be able to reverse aging properties, at least. He's an angel, right? Goku and Vegeta would look at each other, 
And they say, well, we don't have a choice. As we can't defeat Lord Beerus right now. Even if we got out and he wakes up, he'll probably just destroy us and maybe even hurt our families. We don't know. Vegeta would state, then let's take this opportunity to train harder than ever in here. We can do it. It won't be easy, but we've always over uh, overcome anything that's been in our way. Goku would then tell Bulma and, you know, go tell them about what's happened. And so they do not panic as to why they've not communicated. Whis would do this only one time and explain, yes, I'll explain to them. As then, two years in the outside would pass. Inside of Whis's staff has been 730 years. Son Goku and Vegeta were sitting in there meditating together. Both of them had very long beards. Their clothes were just tattered cloths at this point, barely hiding anything. Over this time of training and fighting, they've learned power that they never thought they would have felt before. They're stronger than ever, but they're lucky that they had each other in there, as Goku and Vegeta are like brothers now. As they push past all that silly pride stuff and everything, as it's been so many lifetimes, Vegeta has matured a lot, same with Goku, and they both respect each other in that sense, and they knew that they needed each other to do this. And for the mentality's sake, Whis would make sure to have holograms of their family, so they can at least see them, and see them growing up. At least they have something. After Beerus would then wake up, he was in his nightgown as he would then change and walk out. He would then say, oh, are those two guys dead yet? As Whis would not give an answer, he would say, oh, they must be now, my lord. It's been so many years, it would have been over a almost 800 years in there. As Beerus states, I know it's the wrong thing to do, but it's the right thing to do for the universe, whether it's bad or right. As then, Whis's staff, which was floating nearby, would begin to shake and start shaking back and forth as Beerus would look at it confused. As the staff begins shaking, it begins cracking. As now, the staff would then explode, as then a portal would then open and out landed Goku and Vegeta. Beerus was utterly shocked to see them alive. Whis was even surprised with how they were able to break his staff, but Whis knew of their power. He knew how powerful that they were getting. And during this time locked in the staff, Whis would of course help them mentally, as what else is there to do other than just sit there? Whis would have actually trained with Goku and Vegeta in the staff for a lot of the earlier time of the year. So for those 300 years, they would be training with Whis, learning Ultra Instinct, learning more, becoming more powerful than ever. He would then even explain Hakai abilities and destruction abilities, but that's not his forte. But even the likes of Vegeta was even able to master these pa powerful techniques because of his sinful, powerful nature. But then they grew so powerful that they were even able to defeat Whis with not too much effort, even in their new forms. Whis was truly proud of them, but he was a little bit worried at the same time. Will they take their vengeance on Beerus? He doesn't believe so because they understand a little bit now. They're a lot more mature than their original selves. And Vegeta's not much on vengeance anymore. But they are Saiyans, unlike any other people. And you betrayed them. So they are going to kind of give you a rude awakening. Beerus would then look at Whis and be so confused and angered, yelling at them, why are those two Saiyans alive? I told you to kill them and let them die. As then, Vegeta would then look at Kakarot and tell him, he's mine, stand out of my way. And Goku would then put a hand on Vegeta's so shoulder saying, brother, wait. And then he would whisper to Vegeta to not kill him. And Vegeta would then look at him, don't worry, I'm not gonna kill him, but I am gonna kick his ass. As then Vegeta would then walk right up to Beerus and tell him that you locked us away for all those years and now I'm going to beat the hell out of you just because I can. Beerus would then smirk and say it would take you millions of years to even touch me. How do you think that you can defeat me? And then he was cut off by a powerful gut punch by Vegeta who was still in base form and this punch would sink in his stomach and make him spit blood everywhere. This would greatly damage Lord Beerus, who was utterly shocked at how they were able to deliver such a devastating blow. Maybe his guard was down, but there's no way. 
He can't sense their power. Vegeta would then tell him, the reason why you can't sense me is because I'm lowering my power level to where it's so small you can't even sense it. Only spiking it when I need to strike. Haven't you not learned that for being a destroyer? Beerus would then charge up his purple aura in anger and then fire a Hakai ball right at Vegeta to destroy him. As Vegeta would then catch it with his finger and then slap and then whisk it away as it would dissipate. Vegeta would then state that your Hakai abilities will not work on me. A being who is stronger than the set god of destruction, the Hakai cannot work. And he would then reveal a Hakai ball of his own. I've learned to master this power over all of the lifetimes that I was in there. You have nothing to surprise me. Beerus would not give up so easily, as he would then fly in and continue tackling Vegeta. But Vegeta would then stand there and tank the attacks, and only slightly moving his head. He would be smirking at Lord Beerus, as he would then grab his shoulders and tell him, Lord Beerus, I forgive you. And then he would headbutt Lord Beerus, making a massive shockwave, and it would knock Lord Beerus out cold, as he would land, bleeding from his head. Whis would not intervene with this, as he knew that this is what they were going to do, but they spared his life. As then, he would then heal Lord Beerus, but Lord Beerus was still out cold. Now that Goku and Vegeta have now come to their senses, they begin breathing heavily. As it's almost like a giant weight has been lifted off their shoulders. They've been locked inside of that staff for so long, forcefully keeping the key locked within their body that it makes it hard to breathe, it makes it hard to live. Now, they've gotten used to it after so long, but now that they're outside in the world, they've never felt so good. They're light as a feather, they can they, they breathe like they never breathed before, the air is so fresh, they can feel the ground as they haven't felt ground in over 730 years, they're touching the grass like every League of Legends player. It was incredible. They truly missed it. As first things first, they wanted to go see their family, instantly. Goku would then grab Vegeta's shoulder, and Vegeta would actually use instant transmission, teleporting away back to Earth. Lord Beerus would then wake up, and he was humiliated, but furious at Whis, telling him, why would you do this? Why? What if I go tell the Grand Priest what you did? Whis would then give a little smile and state, Do you really want the Grand Priest to know what you've done, Lord Beerus? Some of the naughty things you did? Breaking the rules, almost destroying the universe, not doing your job? Beerus would then grunt about it and state, Well, now they're more powerful than possibly even you, and now they're on the loose. Whis would explain that they're not going to turn evil or do anything. And either way, if balance is truly destroyed, then my father will handle them. The Grand Priest. Goku and Vegeta would then arrive home and they would then shake each other's hand and go their separate ways. They would then fly both to their own separate homes and be embraced by their wives and children. The wives would very quickly tell how disgusting and stinky that they were for not having to shower in 730 years and having horrible large beards that went down to their abs at shower and shave time. Afterwards though, they feel refreshed and then they need some food. Whis is okay at cooking, but nothing is as good as the wife's cooking. As they would have a big party where they would see all of their friends. This even made Vegeta and even Goku cry as well, seeing all their friends after so long. Of course, with Chi Chi's amazing cooking, they would then devour so much food, more than they've ever devoured before. As it's been so long since they've had a legit home cooked meal, they would be truly happy. While on the other side of the planet, Frieza's little henchmen were slowly stealing the Dragon Balls to then resurrect Lord Frieza. Once when they did that though, and the dragon was revived, they would then bring Frieza back. Frieza was in pieces and they had to put him together. Now Frieza knew how rusty he was, and he learned about them defeating Majin Buu, as Frieza definitely has a lot of training to do. As three to four months would then pass, Life was finally restored, as Goku and Vegeta would still keep on training, mainly meditating, as that's a new way for them to train. But they wanted to truly enjoy life, just relax, not having to forcefully fight or to just even survive in there. They were truly happy. 
Bulma was even the most shocked, as Vegeta had the biggest developmental change of all time. Vegeta was a really happy man. He was really mature. And even when he met Bulma, after so long, he would tell her how much he loved her and how much she meant to him, which was completely out of character. And the fact that he even cared about Trunks is even bigger, too. But Bulma likes this new Vegeta, as he would explain how long he's been trapped in there. Now she gets worried about the fact that they can live that long and she'll be all old and dead by that point, but Vegeta explains it was Whis's doing. Saiyans lives kind of similar lives to humans, maybe a little bit longer, but we die at a young age fighting, so it doesn't matter. As time would then pass, Frieza would then arrive on Earth with his henchmen. Now during this time, Goku and Vegeta would be continuing their training. Goku would also be focusing with Gohan to try and get him to train, as he knows that they're really powerful, true, but they won't be around forever. And what if they were stuck? What about Earth? So Gohan would actually have his training kept up a little bit, having Goku there. And Goten would be trained as well, mainly trained with his father the most. So Gohan is not as rusty as he is in the original. Now, once when Frieza would then appear, they would easily take out the henchmen the same as before. But Frieza has a bone to pick with Goku. Now, Vegeta at this point has grown past his hatred for Frieza. He still despises Frieza but he's not going to let Frieza live in his mind anymore. As he also senses how weak Frieza is, they don't even want to fight Frieza, as he's so weak. But then Goku has an idea. As he even spoke to Vegeta about it, as when you're locked in there for over 700 years, yeah, a lot to talk about. He would then explain about if they ever do get out, they want their sons to train, and their family to train, their friends. So if they're not around, like, whatever this happens... The planet will be safe, and Vegeta agrees upon this. This is why he's been training Trunks as well. So Trunks and Goten is actually a bit more powerful. They would fuse into Gotenks as before, so Gotenks would help around fighting people as well. Gohan here is not an absolute weakling. As we remember with Gohan, even having a few slight battles, he got massively more powerful. And even doing slight training every now and again, he can never get rusty, which is really broken. Gohan, by this point, has gotten a little bit more powerful. He's a bit more powerful than himself when he was in mystic form. And he would continue his fight with Frieza, actually battling Frieza first, in Super Saiyan, which Gohan here is continuing to get more powerful as the fight is actually going on. Goku notes that, could you imagine if Gohan was in there with us for all that time? Oh my goodness, he'd be way more powerful than we are for sure. Vegeta would even agree to this. And during this time, of course, Gohan, even in Mystic, would be fighting Final Form Frieza and giving Frieza a pretty good battle, as his power level is increasing with each fight. But Frieza would then use the full power of his Final Form and shoot a massive death ball at Gohan, which Gohan would be able to deflect barely, but he was gravely injured. Goku was then going to step in, but he knows his son Gohan is not done yet, as Gohan has been keeping a Sensu Bean on the side. Gohan here would then eat it as it was from his belt. He would then be re fully recovered and get right back up, spitting blood out at Frieza. Gohan has gotten a massive Zenkai at this point, and his mystic power is flourishing more than ever as he's breaking his limits. Frieza would then give the Saiyan a worthy fight, as he would then charge up his power and transform into his golden state. As this was Golden Frieza versus Mystic Gohan, the two would continue their battle Gohan was on the losing end, but he still held on, fighting with true heart. Now, Goku was ready, as if Frieza went too far and almost killed Gohan, he would stop Frieza killed him instantly. But he wants Gohan to fight his own battles for once, and Vegeta was always ready too. Even though, protests from the others were begging to go help. Now, Beerus would actually arrive at this point, as he would tell Bulma about that Sunday that she promised, and he would be eating that. Beerus would kind of keep his distance from Goku and Vegeta as he's worried they're still pissed at him. Goku and Vegeta at this point, they don't care about it no more. Bygones be bygones, they can beat Beerus, whatever, doesn't matter. Back to Gohan versus Frieza as Gohan will continue to fight, battling Frieza with everything that he has. This was a brutal battle, almost as bad as DBZ Broly in the movie. But Frieza was starting to falter. Gohan noticed it during their fight. Slowly, his stamina is dropping quickly. This is the same mistake that Frieza made on Namek, when he has a power that he's not used to yet. So Gohan would just take the brunt of his attacks and just try to survive. Once when Frieza was continuing his assault on Gohan, giving him combo of attacks, 
each punch was getting weaker and weaker to where Gohan wouldn't even start moving from the punches. He would then grab Frieza's fist as Gohan was pretty badly wounded, having the top G torn off with, with blood everywhere. Gohan would then smirk at Frieza and state, looks like you're out of gas, Frieza. And he would deliver a powerful gut punch to Frieza as Gohan's been saving his power. And he would then send Frieza into the air and deliver a beat down on Frieza. Gohan would not drop his guard like Goku and Vegeta does in the original, as he knows to kill Frieza as soon as possible. He would then charge up a Kamehameha wave. Using every ounce of his power, he would send it right towards Frieza, sending him near to outer space. Frieza was starting to push back against the attack, though, as he still, even after being exhausted, is still a bit more powerful than Gohan. Gohan was then running out of options as he didn't even know what to do. But then Goku would then appear behind Gohan, speaking to him, telling him to push. You have unlimited potential within you. Use it, Gohan. Let go. Don't worry about the planet. It'll be okay. Gohan would then stream and have double the Kamehameha power, pushing right through Frieza and completely obliterating the tyrant. Gohan would then fall unconscious as he used everything he had, and he was soon healed by Dende and the others. They were all proud of Gohan, and even Beerus complimented that that boy has a lot of power for a being that doesn't even have mortal for Gaki. As now Goku and Vegeta would then return to their families, and Gohan now understands that he has a purpose. Maybe his father then won't be around forever. And if a threat like Frieza comes around, he needs to be prepared. As he would then agree with his father, telling him that he needs to start training again. And Goku would start training him. Just like before. Trunks was in the distant future as he was now running for his life against a demonic-like being who wants to destroy all mortal life on the planet. Trunks would be able to escape in the time capsule, really escaping with his life. The time machine would then warp through time as Trunks would then awaken. The first thing that he would see is Son Goku and Vegeta. Cut to the Z Fighters a few minutes before. Goku and Vegeta was actually training together, trading some blows back and forth, doing some light little training, as they don't want to use too much power, but they're bored, nothing else to do. As Bulma and the others would be hanging out, a time machine would then crash as Bulma instantly realized that that's her time machine, as it was Trunks. They would then lay Trunks down as Trunks was knocked out cold. Trunks would then awaken, and he would then scream and throw a fist right towards Goku. Goku would then grab the fist, so confused as to what's going on. Trunks would then regain his senses, and then he would apologize and explain what has happened to his time. He would explain that there is this demonic being called Goku Black. This man, this being, who appears to be like Son Goku, looks just like him, is destroying all the mortals and trying to recreate the entire multiverse in his own liking. All the 12 universes. This would actually surprise Goku as he's really confused as to how is this possible? He's not a bad guy. And Trunks says, no, it's you, but it's not you at the same time. It's different. Something's not right. No, I know that you're gone and that you passed away. So there's no way it's you. Right after this occurrence, Beerus would actually be interested as to why this mortal decided to travel through time as you can't do that. That's breaking laws. Goku would then actually get in front of Trunks and protect him, telling him that, look, whatever this guy is, apparently he's just as powerful as maybe even I am, and that could be a major issue. Who can stop him? As then, a portal would then open, as out came Goku Black. Goku Black would then smirk, looking down, as the first thing he would see is Son Goku. Son Goku would then fly right up, and the two would exchange some words back and forth. But then the fight would begin. The two would begin trading blows back and forth. Goku was surprised at how powerful Goku Black was, as Goku was not using his full power in his base form still, but Goku Black was quickly growing in power because he was holding back too. Goku Black was marveled at his power, as Goku Black just recently got this new body. So Goku understands. Goku Black here must be somebody else inside of his body. Goku remembers it a little bit, from the, even the likes of Captain Ginyu switching bodies. Maybe that's what happened, or a version of it. And maybe somehow he's able to get this powerful? Goku Black would then charge up at the purple dark aura, 
as he would then shock Goku, as his power would already surpass that of Beerus, and he would continue attacking Goku. Beerus was shocked at how powerful Goku Black truly was. Goku would then transform into a Super Saiyan, and even in Super Saiyan 2, which this would then make Vegeta a little bit worried, but not too much. As But he is worried about this rising power. If this Goku Black fellow appears to be as powerful as Son Goku, then he could transform into what they are, and that's no good. Goku Black and Goku would then begin trading blows back and forth, two seemingly evenly matched for each other, but as Goku would start powering up, he would then leave Super Saiyan 2 and transform into Super Saiyan 3, as this version of Super Saiyan 3 has no key drain or anything to his body. He would overpower Goku Black, as Goku Black would then laugh at him, saying that this is incredible, as he would then transform into a Super Saiyan, and then go into Super Saiyan 2, and then go to Super Saiyan 3, saying how much his body is adapting already. Goku was shocked at how quickly he can transform, but it is his body. As Goku Black and Goku, the two Super Saiyan 3s would begin fighting, as it was shaking the entire universe. Whis actually used a bubble to make sure that they do not destroy the entire universe fighting each other. Right when the fight was really starting to heat up, Goku Black was then pulled away by the time ring, forcing him back, as then he was forced to go back to the future time. But right before he did, they would destroy the time machine. As Trunks thinking that there's no way to go back and save his friends, Bulma states that she can just fix it and make a new one to go back, but it will be a few days time, at most. During this time, Vegeta and Goku agree that they can train Trunks and make him more powerful than before, to even survive against a being like Goku Black. But Vegeta states that he'll take care of his son on his own, and Goku understands this. As for this, Whis would then open up his staff and allow Vegeta and Trunks to go inside. And they would begin training for the next few days, which in return is the next few years. As you guys know, one day is one year inside of the staff. So even if Bulma takes a week, that's seven years inside of pure training. As Vegeta would then take his time training Trunks, making him more powerful than ever. As once when they leave, Trunks is different. He's way more powerful. He even has a beard and way longer hair. But Oma offers to maybe cut his hair a little bit, as Trunks would even agree. But he says he's going to keep it for now, as Trunks has a very similar look to himself from the Bojack movie, as he's not skinny anymore, he's actually bulky, and he actually has a physique. Trunks comments on how powerful he's gotten, but even then, he doesn't even know if he can fight Goku Black still, as he has a long way to go. Vegeta knows this, but he says that now you're much stronger, so you might be able to survive. Once the time machine is now finished, they would never have gone to go see Zamasu like before. So Zamasu wouldn't necessarily turn evil, so there's no extra Zamasu, it's just Goku Black. They would then arrive in the future. Goku Black was waiting for them, as he knew that they were going to be arriving sooner or later. Trunks would then unsheath his sword and charge in at Goku Black, as then the fight would then begin, as very quickly, Trunks would then showcase his new form, as Trunks would then transform into Super Saiyan Blue. And after his fight with Goku Black, he would actually be on even terms with base Goku Black, but Goku Black would begin pushing him back, as Vegeta states that he does not have time to mess around, use the power. As Trunks would then dive deep within himself, Trunks would then unlock a power befitting correctly. Trunks would then use Blue Evolution, which has a darker tone of hair and more you know, pupils, as Trunks was 20 times more powerful and his rage increasing, he would start to overpower Goku Black, as Goku Black would then transform into a Super Saiyan and start to overpower Trunks. This is when Vegeta would then step in, as he has a personal issue with Goku Black taking Son Goku's body, and not to mention, also the fact that he beat up his son, destroyed his timeline, and he's a false Saiyan. He can feel it, that's, that's not normal energy. He asked, who is he? As Goku Black would then tell him who he is, he's a Kai, who saw how horrible mortals are, and that gods are not respected anymore. So he took Goku's body, by using the Super Dragon Balls, and now, he's more powerful than he's ever been. As Vegeta would then smirk and say, then you're not a real Saiyan. 
as Vegeta would then show him a power that he's been waiting for this. Vegeta would then transform the Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2, then 3. He would state that these powers are powerful, but they're useless. Then he stated that I could only go further and unlock a new realm of power with the gods. He would then transform into Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue, Blue Evolution. And then he said, but I wanted to step further beyond that of the gods. And then he stepped forth and transformed into Ultra Ego. And then he turned into Ultra Instinct. Vegeta states, then we thought that this was the epitome of power. But within that time chamber, this took us hundreds of years to master this power. There was a power beyond this. After mastering these forms, we've learned to combine all of the power and pushing it further than beyond anything before. We've unlocked something called the Omni Limiter. These limiters on our body limit the human, mortals, and gods about how powerful they can become. And we've learned to break the first barrier to even access this form. As Vegeta would begin powering up, a white aura would then surround his body. As Goku Black would have a sadistic smile, seeing his power level shoot to levels never thought before. This power would shake all the 12 universes as Vegeta has now transformed into an Omni Super Saiyan with the white hair and the red markings glowing like flames across his body. Trunks was in awe, but he wasn't too surprised as he did see the form in a glimpse before while training. Vegeta, as he did it to prove a point, Goku would be standing there smirking as he knew that Vegeta was getting serious. Vegeta would then give him a worse beatdown than even the original Goku Black got in the original fight, as Vegeta would almost torture him a little bit to teach him and show him that no matter how powerful he gets, he can never match us. After delivering a powerful punch, Vegeta then charges up a final shine attack to end Goku Black. Goku Black would then begin laughing, as he stated that he always knew there was a power, a power to become stronger than God aka Zeno. As he would begin streaming, he then too would transform into an Omni Super Saiyan. This would shock both Goku and Vegeta. And Goku Black would state that I've mastered this body. Do you really think that I didn't know you had this power? And do you really think that I would let you defeat me? I'm a true god now. As this version of Goku Black Vegeta and Goku both have two limiters. Goku Black has one. He stated that it was easier to break the limiter because of how powerful and so Goku was the closest. And not to mention, being a true god automatically took the limiter off. If he ever did a fusion or if he ever was able to break another limiter, he would be as powerful as Zeno himself. He would be omnipotent. Vegeta would then scoff and say, that doesn't matter anyway. So I can still defeat you. The two would begin their battle, as it would be seemingly evenly matched, but Goku Black was holding back. As he would then power up to full strength, he would overpower Vegeta nearly instantly. As Vegeta was on the losing end, Goku would then transform as well, and him and Vegeta would continue their fight, fighting against Goku Black. As now the fight would then continue on, both of them teaming up gave them a better chance as it was an intense fight. But the issue was, is that Goku Black kept on healing. This version of the Omni form has healing properties. Mixing in with his true divine power makes it easier for him to heal himself than even Goku and Vegeta can, as it uses up stamina. But he's so powerful that he can use up more stamina without having to be worried about being surpassed. And he was only growing stronger Goku and Vegeta were on losing terms, as they don't know what to do. As Goku Black was far too powerful, he's only growing stronger, as his limiter was about to break. As now, Goku has one idea. He states, maybe I can do a spirit bomb, I can charge it up a lot faster now. But Vegeta states that even if you got all the energy from the 12 universes, highly doubt anybody would. How would that even work? As then Goku states, wait a minute, 
We can just do fusion. And Vegeta takes true. But we never practice it. And it's been so long. We're going to mess up. Trunks would then tell them that he'll buy them some time. As he would then grab his sword and charge at Goku Black, who began toying with Trunks, messing with him. As Vegeta and Goku would then try to do the fusion dance, but they would mess up. As now they appeared as a fat, white Omni Gogeta. And they would then defuse. As over an hour would pass, similar to Broly versus Frieza, as Trunks was still holding out, kind of make being fun for Goku Black. As Goku and Vegeta had one more shot, as Trunks was then picked up as he was in base form, and he was about to be killed, Goku and Vegeta doesn't know what's going to happen if they fuse. But whatever happens, they must stop Goku Black. As then, they would do the fusion dance perfectly. As now, a new warrior was born. A new being. Another Zeno. A being of true omnipotent power was born. Zeno can feel it. As even Zeno would then teleport instantly with his guards and the Grand Priest. And watch what's going on. As he was not happy that there's another being that has omnipotent power. How is this possible? The Grand Priest was shocked himself. As he doesn't know really what to do. How can these mortals be this powerful? What has been going on? As Goku Black would then charge in, Gogeta would smirk and easily slap him away. As he would then begin to give Goku Black the beatdown of a lifetime. But Goku Black was not finished, as he continued to grow more powerful, but it was nothing against Gogeta. Gogeta would almost toy with him a little bit, tossing Goku Black around like he was nothing. Then he had to end this quickly as he would then charge up a Stardust Breaker, throwing it right at Goku Black, and it would hit him, causing a massive explosion, destroying multiple universes. Thus, Goku Black was killed, and Zeno was not happy, as Zeno would then appear right in front of Gogeta, and Gogeta would then explain himself, and saying that he can fix this, as he can try, as him and Zeno and Zeno would then quickly smile and say, oh, so we're friends. But that was really cool. The Grand Priest was the most angry. As now during this fight, though, they would then, of course, him and Zeno would then work together and repair the universes as Trunks would then thank Goku and Vegeta, who are now defused. Goku had the time of his life alongside Vegeta. Last time they had a fight like that was them fighting each other and Whis' staff and breaking the staff. Which Vegeta agrees. As Trunks would then thank them for saving his timeline. And the fact that they'll try to find Namek or do something to fix this. As Goku states, well, he actually knows where Namek's at. Maybe he can go teleport and find it for him. As he would, they would do just that. Teleporting to Namek, being able to find the Namekians, of course. And using the Dragon Balls, as this is plot-induced, to wish everybody back that was killed. By, of course, Goku Black. Fixing Trunks' timeline. Vegeta would then tell Trunks to continue training not stop training and if there is the hyperlock time chamber still there on the lookout go there and continue training there a saying has no limits as you can see trunks would then agree as zena was telling that they need to leave to their timeline as he's only going to allow this one time they would then leave and then return back to the present timeline once back home they were relieved that that was all over with as now goku Remember, he's still friends with the current time Zeno. Zeno would then meet up with Son Goku as just like before, and he would talk about Goku offering that tournament idea, which Goku agrees that'll be awesome. Zeno would then agree, and the tournament of power would be in motion. Very quickly, though, the gods would then speak about the mortals who are surpassing the gods of themselves, but they don't know how powerful that they are. So the tournament of power, fast forward to the tournament of power, would turn out a little bit differently the tournament of power would pass through a little bit more different. With the fact of Goku and Vegeta both being in there, they're all that they need for the whole team. But Goku and Vegeta would actually stand back, as they're like the final straw to kind of do anything. Gohan has actually continued his training. He's been training harder than ever, focusing more on less than studying and doing a job, more on training. 
as Gohan easily found a way, as he works for Bulma now, with the help of Vegeta. As Vegeta did this for Goku. It's like Gohan is always given a large amount of money for his family, but he keeps his training up. And Vegeta did this for Goku, as that's what brothers do. With this happening, though, Vegeta would then stand back and smirk, watching everything. He compliments that the only true being that would probably even pose a little bit of a threat is that fellow right there. And they would then look at Jiren. Belmont and the other gods know about Goku and Vegeta's power. As he tells Jiren to go attack Son Goku, as he's the biggest threat, Jiren would then agree and then begin walking towards Son Goku. Gohan would then cut right in front of Goku and tell him, Father, let me fight this one time. Goku would actually allow it, and Jiren would state to move out of his way. And Gohan states, if you want to fight my father, you need to fight me first. Jiren would then agree, as Gohan would then charge in in base form, and he would hit Jiren, knocking him back. This would surprise Jiren, as Gohan even in base form is incredibly powerful. But he doesn't appear to be in any form. But Gohan was. He was in his mystic form. As we know, the mystic form doesn't really change your appearance. It just pushes your potential. Gohan, at this point, is around the same level as Jiren, with some training. So, this version of Gohan caught right up real quick. And he would start to fight back against Jiren, giving, giving him a true fight. This version of Gohan is able to push back Jiren, and with his power level increasing as he's fighting and growing more powerful, he would then be pushed, as Jiren has never been pushed this hard before. With Jiren backed up into a corner, he would then turn into his limit-breaking power. With this power, though, he would then overpower Gohan quickly. But with Gohan knowing that if he fails and everything else fails, then his wife, Pan, everybody will die. As their fight was so catastrophic that it destroyed most of the ring and knocked the majority of the fighters out as only a few remain. Now cutting to Goku, Goku would actually run around and he would meet Khalifa and Kale. Khalifa and Kale would begin their fight with Goku and Goku would, was easily handling them. They would then transform into Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2, it wouldn't do anything against Goku. Goku was easily overpowering them. Even when Kale learned to master her Berserker power, Goku, even in base form, wasn't even trying. This made Khalifa and them angry, as then they decided to fuse into Kefla. Once when they became careful and powering up, Goku would start to hold back, as he's still holding back in base form, but he still wants to see how well they do. As Kefla and Goku would then drag out a fight to have some fun, Vegeta was actually on his own fighting Kaba, but he would very quickly defeat him. But he pushed Kaba to see how hard he can go, making Kaba go into Super Saiyan 2. Vegeta would then help alongside Piccolo defeat these Super Namekians, and he would also defeat Aniraza by himself. Vegeta would then also see Hit and Topo, as he would easily defeat Hit, and Topo would transform into a God of Destruction, as Vegeta, with honor, would then show him God of Destruction power as well, as he would go into Ultra Ego and easily knock out Topo and Dispo. As Vegeta doesn't really think this is a waste of time, as he's trying to draw some stuff out, but he wants to watch Gohan fight Jiren, so he'll slap everybody out of his way. Beerus was the most confident out of everybody, as he was making fun of all the other gods of, gods of destruction. As after the Terminator power ended, Gohan was able to overpower Jiren by unlocking his beast form, being pushed near the brink, and learning that if he loses, Pan or else will die. He would then snap, turning into beast Gohan, and he would overpower Limit Breaker Jiren, knocking him out. After the rest of the Z fighters would then knock the rest of the fighters out with the help of Goku and Vegeta either way, the fight was over, or wasn't. All the gods of destruction would then stand up, and even the angels would stand up. The only ones who would not stand up is Beerus and Whis. As then Goku and Vegeta would then look around and be confused, as then the Grand Priest would then teleport all the Z fighters other than Goku and Vegeta out of the way. As then all the gods of destruction would then go into their true god of destruction forms, and the angels would then prepare to attack as this was the final, as this was the second round for Zeno to give Goku and Vegeta a true fight. As Zeno was bored, all the angels and gods of destruction would then attack Vegeta and Goku. Now Vegeta and Goku in base form 
is already around the same strength as the God of Destruction. But the fact that all 12 is or all 11 and 11 angels are attacking at the same time and the angels are millions of millions times stronger, Goku and Vegeta would then transform both into Super Saiyan Blue and they would begin their fight. As with both of them teaming up together, splitting off, fighting six and six of the other ones, it was a bit of a tough fight. As after their fight ended, both the angels and God's destruction were defeated by Goku and Vegeta, who had a fun time, as that definitely pushed them a little bit, as they almost had to use their Omni forms. But then Zeno begins clapping, as now was the final round. And the final round was the Grand Priest himself, who would then float down and tell them to get up. The Grand Priest is worried about these mortals, that they have that much raw power that they can defeat all of his children and the God of Destructions with ease. The fight would then begin, as the Grand Priest would then fly in and deliver a double gut punch to both Goku and Vegeta at the same time, easily knocking them back. As they were shocked at this power, as they would knock them out of Super Saiyan Blue and launch them back through the destroyed ring. Vegeta and Goku, both their top Gs were ripped off from the attack, were amazed at how powerful he was. This guy, this guy might even be stronger than Goku Black, but they've gotten stronger since then. As then they would transform into their Omni form, both of them attacking the Grand Priest and pushing him back. But it was almost an even match, but with the Grand Priest's superior knowledge and more intellect, he would overpower Vegeta and Goku and outwit them in terms of skill. As then they're on the losing end, the Grand Priest knows to knock one of them out and get them out of the way. He would then blind Son Goku by hitting him right in the face, blinding him. He would then attack Vegeta using all of his strength and delivering a powerful blow that would completely destroy Vegeta's chest, knocking him down as Vegeta was barely alive. Goku would then get up as the Grand Priest would then show off his raw power as it's been so long since he's never fought at full strength before other than Zeno. Zeno was having the time of his life, having his new high speed tablet so he can watch everything go down, like a Dragon Ball Super movie. Goku has one option, and Vegeta tells him to do it. So Goku would then begin charging up, screaming, as he would then scream, Kaioken, and the red aura would then surround his body. So Goku would then push this power even further, going up to times 10, times 20, and then he would fly in delivering a powerful blow to the Grand Priest, knocking him through the pillar, which would completely destroy it. As then the Grand Priest would then use his full angelic strength, showing off his angel wings, attacking back at Goku. With Goku on the losing end again, he has to finish it now. Goku would then nearly destroy his entire body and scream Kaioken times 100 and deliver a red and white flashing dragon fist and he would actually punch through the Grand Priest's stomach, severely wounding him, and Son Goku would be the last one standing. His body would then shut down as he would nearly die, but Zeno would then raise his hands and heal everybody and fix all the issues. With Son Goku as the winner, he was offered the Super Dragon Balls to wish whatever he wanted. Son Goku would then wish all the universes to be brought back from the Tournament of Power, which Zeno smiled and agreed stating the old dragon language. With that being said, peace was finally restored, as Goku would even tell Jiren that he wants to fight him again someday, and Jiren would tell him that next time they meet, he'll become more powerful than he even imagines. And the Grand Priest gives Goku and Vegeta their respect, as then they all go back home for peace. After the events of a tournament of power, peace was finally restored to all the 12 universes who were brought back by the wish that Goku made. As after the fight with Grand Priest, both Goku and Vegeta were really satisfied. As up to that point, they've been really bored. They've been fighting all these weaker people compared to them. As they've grown so strong that a real fight's not really worth it unless they fight each other. But fighting someone so strong like the Grand Priest, that truly makes Goku and Vegeta happy. Peace was finally brought as now. What about Frieza? Well, for what we do know, Frieza was never brought from a tournament of power. But, just for fun what-if purposes, let's just say that Frieza was magically brought along. 
If Frieza was brought along, then how would they be able to bring Broly? As without Frieza, he's the one who found Broly via through Chi Lion Lemo, finding the ship's beacon, and of course finding Paragus and Broly. Either way, if Frieza would have gotten Broly, or if Chi Lion Lemo did, they would have gone on adventures with Broly, and they would have learned about the Dragon Balls, potentially to be able to gain wishes through Frieza's army, or if Frieza was alive like the original, he would be able to wish for the Dragon Balls, of course he wants to grow taller. But Frieza now actually has a new wish, as of course knowing how powerful Goku and Vegeta is, he wants to wish for immortality, or he can wish for ultimate power. Now Frieza, of course, has been training since then, growing stronger and stronger. But of course, with Frieza, he won't be able to catch up to Goku and Vegeta anytime soon, no matter how much that he tries. Alongside, with Broly being brought along, Frieza wants to test the Saiyan and see if he's even able to touch Goku and Vegeta, just to see, as he's more of a puppeteer than anything. As he knows that Broly has unlimited potential, he wants to see how powerful Broly can become. Maybe Broly will distract him long enough so Frieza can make his wish. While Frieza was off collecting the Dragon Balls on his own, Broly would then begin his assault on Vegeta first, as Paragus sees Vegeta. Vegeta would then smirk as he would be fighting Broly in base form, as Vegeta was easily defeating Broly, and he would have overpowered him much quicker than the original bout, not even trying. But Broly's rage would continue to rise as it would overpower the necklace that he had on. And this, in turn, would then make Vegeta pretty impressed as his power is continuing to grow, but Vegeta was still holding back tons of power. Still, Vegeta in base form would not be too pressed, as he would not even use Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan God to fight this version of Broly. He was messing with Broly, but he wanted to genuinely see how powerful can this Saiyan become, as his power level is continuing to rise at an absurd rate. Broly is continuing to grow stronger and stronger, growing more in power, as he would then lose control, as he would then control the Uzaru state, becoming a Kari, growing in size, being massive. Vegeta was still in base form, and he would spar with Broly back and forth, as he was still having a pretty decent time, but Broly was still far too weak for Vegeta. Goku was getting kind of irritated, as he kind of wanted to go fight Broly, but he turned his attention to Frieza. As he would actually stop Frieza, as Frieza was about to summon the dragon, Frieza would then drop the Dragon Balls and turn to fight Son Goku. Now Vegeta knows to not push Broly too far, as of course he doesn't want Broly to just go crazy. But with Goku easily overpowering Frieza, Frieza would then transform into his golden form, and he would continue to attack Son Goku, which Goku in base form was easily fighting back against Frieza. Goku's a bit bored and wants to have a fun time. With, of course, this happening, Frieza was desperate, as one issue that Goku has is he drops his guard. So Frieza would actually do a psych hold on Goku and then throw him through a mountain. Of course, this never impacted or hurt Goku. This would then give Frieza at least a second to distract and get Broly to lose his mind. Frieza knows that that wild Saiyan does not have Super Saiyan, but he knows that intense rage would help. So, he would then shoot a death beam and kill Paragus. He would then scream for Broly to look as Paragus is dead. Vegeta would then stop and think what happened, and he saw that Frieza killed him as Broly would then start losing his mind. The rage would then send Broly to a frenzy as he would then transform into a Super Saiyan. His power was massive as Vegeta smirked, getting more excited. As Vegeta would then charge up his aura, he would then fly in and start fighting Super Saiyan Broly, as this would shake the entire planet. As Goku was already back by this point, and he would have grabbed Frieza's arm and told him to stop, he just killed somebody. Frieza would then kick Goku away and continue his assault. Now mind you, Goku here in base form is holding back absurd amount of power. He is not even trying. But Goku's getting tired of Frieza, as he needs to focus on Broly. As Goku would then charge up a Kamehameha wave, and he would blast Frieza right back into his ship, damaging it badly. Goku would actually spare Frieza in this what-if, and not kill him, as Goku's still pure heart, and he would tell Frieza that you will never be able to defeat us, leave and never return. Frieza would actually listen, and get back in his ship, and he would actually fly away, as Frieza knows that he's no match for them. Frieza would then have a new plan, continue training to grow as strong as possible, or avoid them. Goku would then meet up with Vegeta, which Vegeta was pretty calm in his base form fighting back against Broly. Vegeta was still holding back some forms of his power, as he was having a blast fighting Broly. Broly would continue to grow in power, as he would then scream and break out of his armor, transforming into Super Saiyan full power. This is a legendary Super Saiyan form, 
as battling with Vegeta back and forth, Vegeta would then, just for fun, flash into Super Saiyan as he would deliver a powerful gut punch to Broly, knocking him down. Vegeta was satisfied enough with the fight as he would then tell Goku if he wants to go see how strong he can get, Goku really wants to fight Broly. Goku would then jump in base form, powering up to his full strength in base. He would continue to fight Broly, having a great time, as Broly is continuing to grow more and more in strength. As we know, Gogeta was so much more powerful than Broly in the original that he overpowered him before Broly's power could continue to rise. Broly here is still getting stronger and stronger and stronger. By this point, he's starting to gain to near the levels of Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta, which would make Goku transform into a Super Saiyan, just to kind of clarify things. As now, Goku would then deliver a powerful blow to Broly and neck chop him, knocking Broly out cold. Goku would spare Broly's life, as he's not going to kill him or hurt him. Well, because of this, Broly's stuck on Earth and Vegeta thinks what should we do with him? Well, Chi Lai and Lemo say that they can offer to take him back onto Planet Vampa, but it's a dangerous place. And Goku states, well, you can only stay on Earth, as if Broly tries anything, they can try and stop him. Chi Lai would then express her gratitude, but doesn't really trust them, as they would then take the injured Broly and get him away from here. Broly was loving Earth. Exploring around Earth and seeing the forest and the beautiful nature, he was not used to it, as he was used to the wastelands of Vampa. He loved it, as it was so calming and soothing. Him with Chi Lai and Lemo, Broly was happy here. This was a new home for him. As Broly was surviving on his own, Goku would appear with some capsules that Bulma brought, spawning a home and, of course, plenty of food. But he knows that Broly definitely has the food cover, too. Goku states that if he can come over here and train Broly every once in a while, then he'll be happy to come over here. As Goku then offers hand to Broly and shake his hand, he would tell Broly that he'll be his new teacher and he can teach him how to control that power that he has, which Broly would then smile and agree to. After these events, we are now going to go into the more fun arcs, as next, after the Broly arc, we are now going to cut right into the Moro arc. Now, if we do cut into more of the Beast Gohan arc back with the Cell Max, we can also do this as well, as Goku and Vegeta would be training on Beerus' planet, a way to protect Earth, with Broly like the original. Gohan here is more powerful than his original self, but the androids and Cell Max are more powerful as well as they have more powerful specimens to grow in strength. But the fight would end up pretty much the same, with Piccolo unlocking his orange form and Gohan already unlocking Beast Gohan by the end of it. But you can have a fun turn and say that Gohan got pushed again and unlocked the Beast form fully. With Gohan in this power level, he would easily be able to defeat Cell Max, and of course the other androids would still sacrifice themselves. Because of this, the Cell Max arc would kind of play off Pretty much the same, you can argue they're a bit more powerful. Goku and Vegeta would still have a match where Vegeta, you can argue, would beat Goku as they're fighting in base war and Vegeta would win as Broly would watch. Beerus was just eating alongside, looking at Chi-Lai. Now cutting into the Moro arc, a few things would change. Even if Moro did show up, the fight would end very quickly. As even the likes of Gohan, alongside with Piccolo, are far more powerful than their original selves, especially Gohan. With the use of the beast form, Gohan would easily overpower any android in his way, and any enemy. Alongside with Goku and Vegeta fighting Moro, sadly, Moro has no chance. As the power of an angel overpowered, of course, Moro, and it made him explode. So imagine Goku and Vegeta powering up even further, transforming into their Omni forms even. That would completely overload Moro, and he would die either way. But Goku and Vegeta would defeat him far before he could have taken their energy and steal their power. So the Moro arc would end a lot quicker than it did in the original. Goku would still meet Miris, who was actually interested to meet the mortals who surpassed even angels. So Miris would never technically die in this what if, but of course we know he comes back. But as we know, the Galactic Patrol was really thankful for them, and of course taking down the magic planet either Moro. A lot of the events would go the exact same, and now we're going to cut really quick into the Granola arc and with the heaters. They would still have the same backstory as Granola would still try to make his wish. There's only one downside. If he wishes to become the most powerful being, he would die. Here's the reason why. If Granola makes this wish, he only had roughly a few years or less left to live. 
how powerful Goku and Vegeta are in general are far surpassing angels and even the Grand Priest, Granola would die. But for what if purposes, let's say that Granola survives, but he has a very, very, very short time span of just a few weeks. He would probably go to find Frieza, but he would then leave to go fight Goku and Vegeta as the heaters were just manipulating everything as we know in the original arc. The heaters were the real masterminds. As Granola fighting, Goku and Vegeta would go a lot more differently, as even with Goku and Vegeta in their Omni forms, they're constantly growing stronger. Now if Granola was stronger than that, I do feel like with Goku and Vegeta, they can either do fusion to defeat him, or Goku can stack Kaioken which Granola would not know about. So if Goku stacks on Kaioken, he would overpower Granola and start to injure him greatly. Now with this, Gas would still make the same wish. Now Gas even making the wish would look almost lifeless. He would look very similar to himself when he was killed by Frieza when he transformed into his black state in the original manga. So he was kind of bony and monstrous looking. Now with Gas being so powerful, he would fight both Goku and Vegeta in their Omni states as Goku and Vegeta don't have a choice, they need to either do fusion, or there's another idea. Goku was bravely injured by Gas, who would overpower them in their fight, and by this point, Vegeta would then use the rest of his Omni Strength to heal Son Goku. And he would give the rest of his strength to Goku, as Son Goku would then begin powering up. As he would begin screaming, he would then look inside of himself, as he was in a pure black area. He would then turn to look, and see his father, Bardock, who would tell him to understand what a true Saiyan strength is, and that we have no limits. As Goku would then push past himself, he would then break his limiter. As Goku originally had two limiters left, now he has one. He's not, he cannot break the first one and the last one, as of course, if he breaks the final one, he'll become the Omni King, which is impossible. Only a fusion can do this. With Son Goku breaking his limiter, Vegeta was shocked by how powerful he has become now, as Goku would then clench his fist and punch a hole right through Gas, killing him. Now because of this, Frieza would then reveal himself like the original What If, and Frieza here would then show off his black form. But Frieza has something cool to show. Frieza would then transform into his fifth form, on top of the black form state. Now, this version of Frieza is insanity power. With the fact that Frieza did not train for 10 years, he trained for almost 100 years. As how did Frieza not die? Very simple. After he made this wish, he would then use the Dragon Balls to wish himself to be younger. And we don't relatively know how long the Frieza species can live for, if it's normal human years or if it's longer. We don't truly know, but I'm going to argue that Frieza can live for at least a couple hundred years at least, or more. With Frieza being so powerful, both Goku and Vegeta were completely exhausted alongside Granola. As Goku would then team up with Vegeta and Granola, they would then all continue their assault on Frieza, as it was a very bloody battle. Frieza at this point has a power rivaling the Angels, but with Goku and Vegeta in their Omni forms, they're exhausted from the battle that they just have with Gas. This was Frieza's one chance to get them. As then, Frieza would then turn shooting a powerful death beam right at Goku, who couldn't block it in time and he knew he was going to die. But before he could do that, Granola would then jump in the way and tank the blast, as Granola was now dead. Goku and Vegeta do not have a choice now. As Goku would then use the Solar Flare and get away, he asked Vegeta if there's anything that they can do. They don't have enough energy to heal themselves, they don't have any sensu beings, they don't have nothing. What do they do? As Frieza was screaming, holding his eyes, he was infuriated, trying to sense their energy. Vegeta has one option. He tells them we need to fuse one more time. Goku would then agree, as then Goku and Vegeta would then do the fusion dance, becoming Gogeta once again. This would then gain Zeno's immediate attention as he can sense another Omni-level being. As then Gogeta would then waste no time with the little amount of energy that he has, he would then appear in front of Frieza and quickly overpower him with the fury of punches and blows. He would then charge up a white Stardust Breaker and throw it right at Frieza. This attack will completely erase Frieza from existence, killing him. After that, they would then unfuse, as now peace was finally restored. Until far off in the universe, that ripple in power awakened something. 
past the 12 universes, on the edge of anything, Zeno locked something away long time ago, as now it was beginning to crack more and begin to awaken. Last time Goku met U for the first time, and during this time he would actually begin training him to be the next generation of fighters, as the planet was truly at peace. Everybody was happy and living good lives. But in the world of the Omni Kings, the Grand Priest was sweating profusely, as the special seal the Omni Kings created to lock away an ancient evil was beginning to break. Now Zeno, who sees this, knows that it's coming as soon as both Zeno would have a flashback to before the multiverses, where a thing. There was a previous universe called Universe Zero. The only universe, and it had a planet, a single planet, that had people who looked a lot like Zeno. They were a divine race of beings who could create and build new things. Plus, they can destroy and remake it. They were on the side of good, and only wanted what's best for everyone, as on this side of the other universe, there was something evil, the opposite. It was the last of its kind, this being the only one of destruction, to see suffering, and it didn't care much for anything but itself. But, it found the planet of the Zenos, and it attacked. Now this being was so powerful, it attacked this species, laying waste to them, and wanted to find a way to be able to create universes itself as one of the youngest of the creation beings was being in a safeguarded lock as the strongest of their kind gift the secret powers of true creation and destruction. And it was Zeno. As Zeno was hidden away, they would he would see the entire species was destroyed. But as a destructive monster, seeing that his job was finished and that this whole thing was probably bogus because he could not find the secret a power, he decides to take a nap. So he decides to seal himself away and then Zeno took this opportunity to learn the powers that he was given. As he would learn to forge the universes. And he would lock this monster away as he was already in a cocoon-like state. But Zeno wanted extra protection in case Zeno doesn't know when it would just wake up. So Zeno would lock it away with all of his power. Then he would begin to start creating. As that's what his species does anyway. And Zeno wants to create, and he wants to destroy, and he wants to see things, experiment on things. But he also wants to make the universes flourish with life, and he wants to have a special helper who can maintain a lot of stuff, as Zeno's just one per person. Zeno would then create the Grand Priest, and would gift him children called the Angels, and created the role for the God of Destruction if the creatures are strong enough in the other universes. But Zeno needed tools first to help him. But he was able to find these magical orbs from the destroyed universe Zero. Zeno calls them the Super Dragon Balls. They would grant any wish to his desire, and they were in an ancient vault locked away that his species had, as the origin was completely unknown. But now, everything was going well, as in the Shield Satyrs, blowing them back as black mist flies out across the universes, like an infection. As the Grand Prix hurries to tell all the all the 12 universes of this issue that has been made avatars to do its dirty work, Zeno was stuck using all of their powers to keep the seal contained, but it was still leaking out. As for now, Beerus nearly falls over, as him and Whis would hurry over to the planet and tell Goku and Vegeta about it, but it was too late. The planet, which was being attacked, this was a major problem, as Goku and Vegeta would sense this odd power. This creature would show itself, as they would ask what it was and who it was, the creature laughed, saying, It is many and it is all. And that's all that these mortals need to know. And Goku and Vegeta, it sees him as the main threat. As they have the power to be able to rival Zeno, that's a problem. But now both Goku and Vegeta would go into their Omni forms, the fight would begin. As Beerus tells him to not hold back, this is not a normal fight. Goku fights first. But it was insanely powerful. Goku was struggling very much so. As Vegeta would have to join in, the two would work together, but they would be struggling against this monster. Goku even tries to use Kaioken, but that does give him the slight uphand in the fight, but it was only for a short while. As they were both battle damaged, running out of options, Goku offers fusion, but Goku knows it's way too unstable. With the fusion dance, they'll just run out of time. And if they do, they'll run out of energy afterwards. 
as they don't know how long the fusion would last, and they don't know if it would be enough to beat this monster himself. The monster would laugh, saying to them, I enjoy you two, hence, I will enjoy you two working for me. As it shoots this blast of mist at Goku and Vegeta, it will go into their bodies, turning their auras dark and evil. Both Goku and Vegeta would scream in agony and pain. Their auras would be flaring. As the creature would laugh, it hears a word calling Hakai. As a Hakai ball nearly hits it, it would jump out of the way, and it would see Beerus and Whis ready to fight this monster. As it would battle them both, easily having fun, messing about with them. Goku, inside of his head, sees visions of his family, blood splattered, as in front of him was this dark monster with right glowing eyes, laughing. As Goku screams, he will not give in to this power. As the black mist shoots out of his body, and it is the same events for Vegeta, who would not fall for this monster, both of their forms change. Their omni forms begin to mutate, smoke covering them. As the creature holds up Whis and Beerus by the throat, it would look over and drop them to the ground, as it was surprised seeing what Goku and Vegeta appear to be in new forms. They somehow turn his own energy into their own energy. As Goku looks at his hand, he understands, saying, Zeno was the light per se, and we only followed that, hence their omniforms. And you're the darkness, so we mix both of your powers together, and well, we have a perfect bond of power. As Goku and Vegeta was beyond stronger than they were before. In this form, they are easily more powerful than the Grand Priest without... Uh, they can probably fight Grand Priest at full power pretty well. And defeat him pretty well. I would say mid-difficulty. It's a massive boost to their Omniforms before. Uh, they are not as strong as Zeno. They are not omnipotent. Uh, they need to do fusion for that. But they are stronger than the Grand Priest. Vegeta and Goku is basically the strongest fighter in all the universes. They're stronger than the Grand Priest. They are the strongest fighters in the multiverse. So, Goku looks to Vegeta as Vegeta would look and say, I got full control. Let me handle this guy. As Vegeta would appear in front of the monster, his red eyes glowing, he would put his fist on his chest and he does a one inch punch going through its body as he would shoot a key blast from his form exploding this monster. As it would reform itself laughing, Vegeta would then charge a new attack he's been training to use called the final shine attack. As the power would actually shock the monster as it would try to get away, its attack would be glowing green as Vegeta would fire it from one arm, screaming as it would hit the creature full force, and it would blow it to nothingness, killing the creature. As Whis got to his feet and healed himself and Beerus, who would tell the rest what is happening, they would need to go to Grand Zeno immediately. But now, Zeno was struggling to keep him contained. Grand Priest runs, runs them down on what's happening, but then the seal started cracking, and Goku and all of them tried giving energy to help, but it was too late. The seal was broken. It was just too much. Blowing Zeno back as the broken wall, the monster steps out laughing. It was finally free, and it pointed right to Zeno. It wants the last of its kind, and it wants to gain that ultimate power that they have to create and destroy anything. Now, Zeno would have a glare, saying it will never have it. As then, the two Zenos and the monster begin fighting. As the monster would laugh and fight both Zenos, plus the guards, as Grand Priest knows Zeno cannot hold out for long, because Zeno is not truly a full-on fighter. It is true Zeno can fight, but he's not a full-fledged warrior. He's not a fighter. He's just a being of destruction and creation. But now, the Grand Priest has an idea. A really, really stupid idea. As he thinks to himself, saying, what if the two Saiyans had their powers or maybe possibly higher than Zeno when they did fusion? But now, they both have Zeno's power, plus this creature's power as well, light in the dark. But the fusion dance wouldn't work, as Grand Priest thinks the Super Dragon Balls can help Goku. As Goku offers Patara fusion, it is a stronger fusion, as Vegeta agrees, but... The earrings that they would even get would not be able to even last a minute or even less. It would just shatter instantly as it cannot handle the power and the magic would wear off. As Goku explains that when they fought this guy named Zamasu, even in Super Saiyan Blue, the fusion only lasted for like 7 minutes and at max and that's it. As the Grand Priest thinks, 
they can just use the Super Dragon Balls and they can wish for the earrings to be strong enough, a pair of earrings that is strong enough to hold this fusion for as long as it needs and to be as powerful as possible. But they would need to hurry though and spawn the dragon as the monster can sense the dragon being awoken, it would punch Zeno away and the guards as he flies in full speed, seeing the dragon as he thinks he knows the ancient tongue, as he can wish for what he wants. And he wants the ultimate power. But he can wish for anything. He has unlimited potential of wishes that he can do. He will laugh and get closer and closer. As Zeno tries grabbing him and stopping him, he was almost too late. As Grand Priest made the one wish just in time, as the earrings drop in both Goku and Vegeta's hand, the monster would fly in to kill them. They put it on quickly. As the Grand Priest used himself as a shield almost to try to protect the fusion, they would then fuse. As the creature would smack the Grand Priest like a fly out of the way, it would blow everyone back. As a new being was born. As it was Vegito. Vegito would yell, All right! As it would appear in front of the monster, pointing at it, saying, It's time he meets his doom. And they would begin their legendary battle, breaking through time and space itself, with each blow nearly destroying everything. Vegeta would clash punches, and then they were teleported to an empty void. As the monster looked around, asking what this place is, Vegeta just stood over there and, you know, comically just shrugged. The typical Goku lightheartedness saying, I don't know, I just made it. Uh, just so my own power, so we can go all out without having to worry about blowing anything up. So Vegito can focus all of his attention on him and show him how powerful he really is. Now the monster thinks, you're holding back? And he would tell Vegito that? Vegito says, uh, yeah, I've been holding back the entire time. You're not even that much of a problem anymore. As the monster obviously does not like hearing that, it would fly in to attack Vegito. But then the two would go back and forth, clashing in this empty void. It was so powerful that even this would crack, but Vegeta would have the advantage, and Vegeta would crash through Zeno's castle, breaking through the barrier, and Vegeta would hold it down by his key. The monster cannot move or escape, as he was going to kill this thing. Zeno said to stop. If the monster dies, then everything could be destroyed as well. As if Zeno died, well, it is Zeno's other half, so he will be specially contained. Vegeta doesn't like this idea, but it is Zeno's choice. As Zeno is the boss, so Vegito nodded. With him, Zeno, the Grand Priest, and all the angels and destroyers, they would use all of their power and seal him away in a deep slumber, even using the Super Dragon Balls so he cannot ever escape again, as this was his fate forever. As the two would defuse using all their power, Vegeta exclaims that he will never fuse with Goku ever again. But Goku would just laugh and say it was awesome and put a thumbs up. As Vegeta was really happy that he has this new form, and he tells Kakarot that they need to have a rematch one day. As Goku says, for sure, buddy. As time passes, Goku was in a field with Oob training, and him saying, Alright, Oob, use that power that we've been training for you. As Oob's eyes turn black with the pink pupils very similar to Majin Buu, he was using Majin Buu's dark power, but for the good as he would charge in, having a battle with Son Goku.